Hi, I'm Bonnie, Bonnie Brusso. Uh, worked over 30 years at Orchard Nursery in Lafayette, uh, 50 years in the nursery business. Pruning roses almost all that time. And why do we even prune roses? Roses will grow and bloom on the top of them without anybody pruning them. Look at a wild rose, it still has roses on the top. Um, but what you get is you get three to five foot of ugly and a foot of pretty on the top. If you prune your roses, you renew the roses and you get one foot of ugly, maybe, with three foot of pretty on top. So pruning your roses will give you much prettier roses. It will give you bigger roses. As your rose bushes get big and have not been pruned, the roses get skinnier and skinnier and littler at the ends. If you prune them, especially hybrid teas, you get bigger, fuller roses, your cutting roses. You prune almost all the roses in the winter when they're dormant. Uh, the only uh, caveat to that is the one-time bloomers, the old-fashioned, usually climbing roses like Cecil Bruner, would only be bloom, pruned after bloom because they only bloom once in the early spring. So you want to prune them after they're done blooming, say May, June. So the first things you do are the three Ds, dead, diseased, and damaged. If you prune roses, you take off most of the leaves while you're doing it. The leaves are what have all the spores on the back of them. In fact, um, find one somewhere, but the leaves have, find, see if you can find any rust on something. The leaves have the spores on the back of them for all the new diseases for next year. Here's a good example. That's a good example of all the spores on the back of the leaf that will give you the diseases the following year. So when we prune, almost all the leaves come off. What doesn't come off, you want to pull and strip and take off all the leaves. All the leaves. But you can save a lot of that effort by pruning first and then, you know, getting the leaves off that that are left. So there's a damaged, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably a dead. Um, there are lots of dead pieces. You get in here. This whole end is dead. So you want to get rid of all the old damaged dead stuff first. When you're looking at what is dead, and what is not dead, you want to scratch it. So this one just is dead, but it's not going to appear dead. If you scratch it, you will see lime green. You'll see a very bright green under there. That's still live tissue. Once you get rid of the dead, damaged, diseased stuff, then you kind of want to get rid of the crossing interior stuff if you're dealing with hybrid cheese, especially these roses down here. Try to get out the middle. So you look straight down into the rows and you keep the things that are going outside, you get rid of the things that are going across the middle and crossing. When you get done with crossing, then you get down to the picky stuff, which is heading all your cuts, your buds to the outside. So then we need to learn to, to see a bud. So a bud is literally where a leaf was attached. Mm -hmm. Let me get another piece that has a leaf on it. Okay. Everywhere there is a leaf. Underneath it is a leaf bud. Okay? Underneath that is a leaf bud. Mm -hmm. Even if it's been there forever, it leaves a leaf scar. A little scar on that wood. Even on old, old, old wood. And that bud will grow exactly the way that the leaflet was attached, okay? So this leaflet came out that way. So if I cut to that, the plant's gonna go that way. What you're trying to do in the end is get an open bowl shape with four or five, six, seven main canes and head them out from that. So your center is essentially open and empty. All 
these roses are hybridized roses. So that means they've got a top that has been grafted on to a bottom root system. Let me explain a little bit about rootstock. All roses are grafted. They're two roses put together, literally grafted together. Your bottom is a rootstock that is sturdy to disease and maybe nematodes and insects and your clay soil or whatever, whatever it has to put up with. The rootstock is very sturdy. The top growth is the rose you picked. That's the rose you wanted, the color you wanted, etc. The bottom part, the rootstock, is really something usually called Dr. Huey, and it is an old climbing rose that has little tiny red flowers in multiples, if it ever gets to that point. It shoots up through your desirable rose three times higher and never gives you a flower. So it's not very useful. It also gets mildew and so forth. But it's a good rootstock. Okay. This is rootstock. See the difference in oh, yeah. the growth of that? It's wiry, it comes out way down there, underneath the plant. So I try to get down there as far as I can and get it out because this is rootstock. This will never give you a flower, or if it does, it'll be a teeny tiny little flower because it was originally a climber. Dr. Huey was a big old climber. It gets mildew, which is that little bit right there, if you can see it. It gets mildew really badly, um, doesn't give you a flower, kind of just a pain. So, you, and it looks different. The leaves look different. They're a different shape right. often than the rows that it's attached to. So you try to get rid of those. Anywhere there's a leaf, you cut right above that leaf at an angle. Now. Good question why there should be an angle. Okay, I'm gonna cut above it at an angle. Um, I think this is just what I've come up with. I've never found an answer for that really. But when a plant, when, a, when you cut it in the middle, that part dies back. You end up with a dead mm -hmm. stub. Mm -hmm. That part dies back at a little bit of an angle right there. And so if you cut at that angle, then you don't leave anything to die back. Okay, I think mean, that's picky. That's really picky. But you do want your rose to go out. So I'm going to cut to this one there. That one will go out that way. This one I'll cut to here. That one goes out that way. And this one I'll cut to here. This one will come this way. So now I've got a kind of a perfect plant that's all going to the outside okay. with a bowl shape in the middle. Okay. Now how high you cut those, I mean, I could go down to here and there, and there, and mm -hmm. still have, you know, um, generally, depending on how tall the rose wants to grow, I'd like three quarters off the roses. So first of all, it would be nicer if there were less leaves because you can't tell what all is there. I would look for the oldest ones. Now, these are really hard because the mulch has covered over the bottom of the rose. So it's really hard to see what you're doing in there. But this one I would hope is real. I would hope that it is not um, rootstock. And in that case, I'd probably go to it. I mean, you've got this and this, this, and here's a nice new one. So I'd probably try to take out this one even though it looks like there's so much nice stuff in there, that takes out your center, okay? Then, I'm, that one I do want to keep because it's very nice. Here you've got a choice between this one and this one. And I suspect this one is not, um, is rootstock because it's so smooth. See how smooth that is? So, not sure about that, but you know, the thing with roses, too, is you won't kill the rose by burning it. Okay, that's the first thing. Don't worry about it. Anything coming off of this stem or this stem, it's going to be pretty sturdy. Anything coming off of this stem is going to be skinny, skinny, weeny little stuff. So 
You want to go down a ways so you can get down to something that's a little more sturdy. The sturdier they are, the better, the more bigger flower you're going to get. So now we're down to what we want to work with pretty much. And I'm going to go around and I don't know, this and this is quite a bit. So I'll probably get rid of one of them. I got rid problem. of that one. Okay, now we're getting more open. Then we want to go around to our things and we're going to an outward facing bud. You're not going to see that on this. Here's one you can see. There's an outward facing bud. You look straight down and everything should go out from there. Okay? And lower is better than higher. Oh, here's a, a good thing to see. This is where you don't have a bud down there that you really want to go to. The best bud is all the way down at the bottom, you know, an inch. So you can go to where it came out before and do that to it, take off everything, because there are always dormant buds. On either side of a bud, there are dormant buds. So I don't know how many of you saw this part, but this is, the bud is always underneath where the leaf grew. You cut just above that bud, and that's what you've got left, is that bud going out like that. There are always dormant buds on either side of that. So if that is damaged or broken, but that's the bud you want to go to, then you just cut to that spot again. hardest thing about rose pruning is sometimes I think when your mulch has built up around the stem of the, the crown of the roses and you can't see the crown. So you have growth coming out and you can't tell whether that growth is rootstock or your top growth. Pruning roses is not rocket science. If you do it wrong, you're not going to kill the rose. If you even go along with a machine and cut off half of them, just the halfway, you're better than if you didn't cut them at all. Uh, I would prefer two thirds to three quarters of the rows off and cleaned out and the dead wood taken out and the buds going the correct ways. But even if it's just hacked down, it's better than not printing the rows at all.